So Elementor have just dropped the 3.5 beta of Elementor Pro. And in there, we've got some new WooCommerce features. Specifically, we can now start to customize the checkout page, the cart page, and also the My Account page. But how much control do we actually have over these features? In this video, I'm gonna take a first look with you guys and we're gonna see exactly what's on offer. I'm also gonna give you my honest opinion as we go through it and I'll sum up at the end. Now, there are more features included in this beta version, but I'm not gonna be covering those in this video. And as always, because it's a beta version, things are prone to change, break, so do not use these on a live production site. Okay, so let's just take a look at what new features have been added in 3.5 beta. So first of all, this is the information about the beta release over on GitHub. It's gonna outline all the different features, how to use them and those kinds of things. In this particular video, I'm only gonna be focusing on these first three options to do with WooCommerce. I'm not too bothered in taking a look at things like the default model and so on. But if you would like to see a video covering those features, let me know in the comment section below and I'll create something on those. Okay, so the three key features we're gonna look at in this video are the checkout, the cart, and the My Account section. So let's take a look at how we can use those. Like I say, this is only the beta version, so please do not use this on a live site, production site, only use this on a test or development site, just so you can have a play around with it, so you don't end up having problems when things don't work. Okay, so with that said, let's take a look at how we can go about creating and using these new features inside WooCommerce and Elemental Pro. Okay, first things first, these are the plugins that I currently have installed and activated on top of the Hello theme. If you are using the Elemental Pro Developers Edition, which allows you to apparently test out the sort of like uh, beta features and so on, that will not work properly alongside WooCommerce. You just kind of get the infinite scrolling or the infinite wheel saying that it's trying to load and it doesn't ever complete. So make sure you don't have that if you want to test the beta version of this out. Okay, so the versions I'm currently running are version 3.46 of Elemental and version 3.50 Beta 1 of Elemental Pro. So this is the first beta release. As we see this progress over the next couple of days, weeks, we probably will find features be refined, any issues will be rectified, and hopefully by the time it gets to release, everything will be addressed and we'll have a smooth transition. Fingers crossed. Okay, so with that being said, let's take a look at how we start working. If we come over to our pages section, inside there we've got the normal pages for our site, including the cart page, the checkout page, and the My Account page. These are normally default creations of installing WooCommerce itself. Now, before editing these was a bit problematic because if you tried to edit with Elementor, it would say it's not part of the template, you can't call the content, those kinds of errors. But we don't seem to be having those now, which is a good thing because that does alleviate some of the issues. So let's start off with the cart section. So let's go ahead and edit this. Now, I've already used Elementor on here, but I've got nothing included in the page. So we'll edit with Elementor. And once that's loaded in, we can now go ahead and start using the new widgets. So let's go and do a search for cart. And you'll see we have a new widget now and a cart. If we drag and drop that into our design, give it a second so you can see this now loads in. And it gives us some extra options on the left-hand side. So we are now, we can, how can I say, we can style the look of the cart, but at this point in time, and hopefully this is something that will change before the final release, that's about it. All these features are more cosmetic than anything else. So what do I mean by that? Let's take a look at these options on the left. You can see we can choose between currently two different layouts. We can have a single column or two column layouts. We can choose one column, and you can see that now drops the cart totals and coupon codes and all those things underneath or we can put it back to the two column option. And if we choose the two column option, we also get the ability to have a sticky right column, which I do like. So if we enable that, we can simply set an offset. We'll say something like 170, I think was about right for this design. And now as that refreshes, you can see that sticks the cart totals on the right hand side. So pretty neat. I like the look of that. It would be nice to be able to position those the opposite way around. If you wanted to have your cart totals on the left hand side, for example, and your products on the right hand side, but at the moment, that's not possible. If we take a look then, you've got your order summary and we can change the text on there. You can come into the coupon, you can change the text on there. We can also use dynamic tags, which again is kind of useful. So if you wanted to create an options page, if you were rolling sites out to a client, you could use that and then you could allow them to edit the actual content that's gonna be displayed inside there. So that's quite cool. Anyway, we've got dynamic tags is a good thing by me. 
Total is pretty much the same kind of thing. We can adjust the alignment of those. We can set the text that's going to be on the different buttons and so on, and the alignment of various different aspects. So you can see we can change the button position. We can make it full width. And the same kind of goes for the title. We can set that centered left, right, and so on. If we come into additional options, enable that. And this then just basically gives us the update cart automatically. That's pretty much all the additional options we currently have. And you see when we enable that, that disables some of the options inside here. So you can see now we get coupon, totals, additional options. And if we disable that, we get order summary and so on. So, you know, depending upon what you choose there, we'll dictate what can be done. Hopping over to the styles, pretty self-explanatory to be honest. All the options are inside here, so you can customize your sections, your typography, your forms, order summary, totals, checkout buttons. So if you wanna change that, for example, we can come into the background type and we can just choose one of our global colors, like for example, this, and you see that updates on there. And if we come into customize, and this is kind of a bit of a weird thing for me, you can now choose some extra sections to add in control for. So for example, the order summary, we can enable that. And we now have order summary as an option, so we can control the styling of that. And if we commit to customize, we can also do the same thing for coupon and also for totals. Now, most people, I would have assumed that want to have access to customizing these kinds of template pages would want maximum control over these. So hiding those away as extra options seems a bit counterintuitive to me. But, you know, I'm sure there'll be people out there that will actually appreciate the way this is done. And you can see if we come back in, nothing else is included in there. So this is what I'm saying is that this is cosmetic changes and quite minimal cosmetic changes. So, you know, we can style things. We can, well, that's basically it. We can en enable maybe some features, but nothing much more than that. So it's okay. If we hit update on there, that will now save that to our design. And if we hop over into our site and we'll just... So we'll add this to our cart, for example, and we'll go and take a look at our cart. You can see there's our updated design with whatever settings, design settings and so on that we choose to apply to it. So that's how we can work with the cart. If we come over, go to the checkout, this is currently using a blank area because I'm gonna show you exactly how that works. So let's come back out of here, exit back to our dashboard, and then we're gonna come in and we're gonna edit our checkout page. We'll edit this with Elementor. Let's do a search for checkout. There's our new checkout widget. We'll drop that inside there. And again, you see we have some basic options over on the left-hand side. We can do that sticky column again, which again, like I say, I do like that feature. We can do a single or double column layouts. So whatever you kind of feel is the best for you. It would be nice to have some options inside here, to be honest, where you can control this when it comes down to the different devices you want to view it on. At the moment, it's kind of like global, single column, double column, whereas it would be nice to be able to style things and set things up to be single column on mobile and tablets, for example, and then dual column when you want to work on a desktop or larger devices. At the moment, we don't have that. Let's pop that back into two columns. When we come into the billing details, you can see inside here we can control things like the alignment, we can choose the form items, and we can come in and we can customize these. So at the moment you can see, for example, first name is using the label and the placeholder, so we can set those inside there. You'll notice no dynamic tags available at this point in time, so we can't customize these by using options pages. If we come into advanced, you can see we can set a default value. So you can pre-fill these out with the information that you would want. And as you can see, if we open up the dynamic tags, if we scroll down, for example, we could come into the user info, expand that out, and then we can choose any of the user info that may be available and have this form element pre-filled out using that information. So that is pretty cool. I'll disable that for now. Again, if we come into additional information, you can see we've got order notes and inside there we can use the advanced information and pre-fill those out if we wanted to. Your order, we have some alignment options, dynamic tags, same kind of thing goes with coupons and payment. So again, you can see that all these are just basically cosmetic and some slight variations upon the information you can include. You'll notice if we come back into the billing details, for example, we can't reorder these. We can't remove any of these. So we are currently still stuck with exactly what we're being given. So this is apparently something that's going to change as whether the beta develops and are these options available, or it will be further on down the line in two, maybe three years time, you know, 
the usual time scale for these kinds of half-baked features that we kind of seem to see when Elemental releases something like this. And in the styling section, you can see again, we've got all those options to customize the sections, typography, forms, and so on. And we can come into customize, and again, we can add in extra areas that we want to customize, like the billing details, additional information, order summary coupon and payments. So I suppose it keeps the interface a little bit sleeker, and you might not be using these options, but it would be nice to be able to come into the content area, select the features that we want, and then those are automatically available inside the style section. So we can just literally enable, for example, the coupon area, and then the options to customize the coupon area would be available inside styles. That to me would be much more logical and a little bit less faffing about to and fro. So there's the look to the checkout page. It looks great, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's a great look, but what Elementor is basically doing is saying, this is a set of designs we've created that we like, and you can change the colors and you can maybe adjust the button colors and the top topography and those kinds of things, but that's all you're going to get, nothing more, nothing that actually allows us to customize the aspects that we really want to customize. So at this point in time, third-party plugins are whooping Elementor's butt. So the third and final widget we're going to look at in this section is the My Account widget. And I'm pretty sure you can guess how this goes. We have a couple of different layouts we can choose from. We have a vertical and a horizontal. And again, they look great. You can see we can adjust the tab position, the spacing. We can go in and change the titles for the dashboard order and so on, the typical endpoints you have as part of you know, your, your My Account dashboard. But you can't change any of that. You can set the dy dynamic tags inside there. You can adjust the alignment of these if you want to. And that's pretty much all you've got inside there. If we go into the style section, you can see we can style pretty much all the aspects of this, the hover states, the normal active for the tabs, sections, typography, order details, all the information inside there is editable. But again, it is all purely cosmetic. Now, I'm sure there'll be people that'll be raving about how good this is. And for a lot of people, that might be exactly the case. You know, it does what you want it to do. It just allows you to sort of drop this into your design. But you could realistically do this with the short code and just create a design inside Elementor, drop the short code for the relevant widget in there, a little bit of tweaking, and you could have something unique. I've already covered this kind of thing in different videos on the channel, so you could check those out if you want to do for custom front-end dashboards and so on. So, as my school report used to say quite a lot, must try harder, and Elementor, I know this is still the beta version, but you really need to try harder because this really does feel like a half-baked implementation where you've literally said, okay, People are crying out for the ability to be able to customize WooCommerce. Let's give them some basics. And that's all you've done. If you take a look at things like Shop Engine or take a look at Woolent or Woolament or those kinds of plugins, they give you so much more control, especially over the checkout page where you can customize and remove uh, different sort of sections. You can adjust the order of the sections, the layout, the entire design aspect of it, all using the normal WooCommerce blocks, should we say. You're not giving us any of that control. You are literally just saying, there's some styling options and you can choose between one or two predefined layouts, nothing more. Really not good enough. Sorry, it's just not. So that's basically the key new features for WooCommerce that have been added into this beta version. My thoughts are, as I've already kind of expressed throughout this video, I really don't think they've given us much at all. They've literally just given us the ability to customize the look, as in we can choose a couple of predefined layouts and the styling. Other than that, we've got no real control over these. Third-party plugins do a much, much better job, and I would still recommend using those. The problem is, whenever Elementor updates and the plugins don't update, or the plugin updates and Elementor doesn't, update there's prone for problems so my thing is i think it's just you need to try harder elemental as i've already said this is just not good enough anyway that's my thoughts you let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on this hopefully by the time the final release comes out there'll be some key features that i've already pulled up being addressed but we'll have to just wait and see my name is paul c this is wp tuts and until next time take care